some visitor? What do I say? It's been so long since I've had company. Oh, it's you. What a surprise. Not a lot of other folks come and visit these parts. I should have known. You should already know me, but just in case. My name's Larry. I was here to be closer to my son, William. Every time I came back to these woods, I could feel him again. If only I could tell him how sorry I am. That's enough about me. We're here for you. These woods hold the answers to your questions. Everything will be explained soon. And this time, please pay attention.
happy we decided to go camping. It's so peaceful in the woods. I'm sorry, life has become such a mess. William's axe. <sighs> I remember taking him to town, letting him choose his first axe. Once we got back to the cabin, he couldn't stop trying to cut down every tree in the woods. There'd be nights it would get so quiet, all you'd hear are the birds and the sound of that axe like a heartbeat outside. Fire brings people together out here. 
You understand. When the chores around the cabin were done, William would always beg to get a fire going by the river. Of course, it always started out as a much larger fire than we needed for our little pit. Nothing to distract you. No worries, guilt. We were at peace with the world. Have you ever found yourself feeling like you're being watched? I decided to go to the lake and catch some fish for dinner one night. I had caught a couple, when I got this sense that something was watching me. I know bears roam these parts, but this was not a bear. I could feel it across the lake staring at me. I got up, reeled the line in, grabbed the fish, and went inside. I've never felt like that before. The place feels so empty without William, but it's held up well over the years. Why was somebody bringing chemicals out here to the woods? That bottle you're looking at is what started this whole mess. That's when I knew I wasn't alone. Turns out mine wasn't the only cabin out here anymore. But next to that cabin, though, was a cage. But it wasn't empty. And it weren't no bear. It had fur, gray and black, like a wolf. But it also had skin, rough, like a man. I couldn't make sense of what I was seeing. I grabbed this bottle, hoping I could bring it to the police. Maybe then they would believe me.
Why can't I have peace? so much. Why don't you let me leave this place? <laughs> that machete was no use. I should have left this place when I found that cabin. I knew what I felt wasn't right. I just didn't know that night would be my last. I didn't know what it was, but what I saw in that cage had come for me. Whoever made that thing must have known I went to the police. This is where my story ends, drunk and scared in a corner. Is this how William felt, alone and scared? <sighs> Your story carries on. You must learn the tales of these woods. They are what's holding us back. We all live with our actions our consequences. But do you? Go now. There's someone else who would like to see you. You're back? Not again. I guess we'll start where we always do. I'm Sarah. I came out to these woods to get away, much like Larry. While I didn't lose a son, I did take one away. You see, I'm a forensic archaeologist. I dig up bones for a living, and I'm quite good at it. Until my last case, my evidence put the wrong man behind bars. I'm out here to solve a cold case, make what I did right. Come on, there's not much daylight left. The first place I dug. Being an archaeologist, you learn over time to never expect anything on your first attempt. It's like waving a magnet at a haystack in the vague hope you'll find the needle, but you have to start somewhere, and for me, this was it. I didn't find much, although it was nice to rule out the area. My office. I spent a lot of time here. 
More than I did at home, I guess. My first case, an adolescent homicide. Sometimes it's easier to use the official wording than to say outright someone killed a kid and left their body on a roof. I spent so many hours in that chair trying to figure it out. How I found out I put the wrong man in prison. The DNA didn't match, but that didn't matter. He's already behind bars, and our justice system is not about to make itself look bad. My superiors look at me with disappointment. They know what I did, and that there's nothing that can be done. What the hell? Who did this? My office, all my things, my papers, my files, ugh! Years of my life are in here! All my cases, everything I ever worked on! All scattered and messed up, who would do this? And why? So many pieces. Sometimes it's only when you step back and take a look at the whole tableau that you can make sense of where each individual fragment belongs, what it all means. But you, I could never make sense of you. And now this? How dare you! Truth be told, seeing the wrong man behind bars really made me question my ability. I put what I found into evidence and finalized a man's life. I should have checked it, but instead, I was in a rush. I was foolish. I just wanted to finally solve the case. Nothing here either except animal bones, again. I remember finding it a little odd that I never once caught sight of a deer or anything that they could have come from. Strange. I thought, given how disturbed the topsoil was, I might be onto something. Unfortunately, another dead end. The strangest thing happened one morning while I was digging. I started to feel something watching me. I'm not crazy, but we've all had those moments. This felt too real. I haven't seen any animals in the woods. What could be out there? I kept digging, but that feeling lingered. I stood up, looked around, but I couldn't see anything. I should have left, gone home for the day and never come back. I was too focused on solving the case. After a while, the feeling went away, and I got on with my digging. Didn't that scare me? Guess not. I just kept going. I was kind of starting to freak out by this point. I needed to solve this case. Thinking back, it was stupid of me to think I would find the answers so quickly. I was rushing again. If I wasn't careful, 
I could lose my job, put another person away that doesn't deserve it. But they had to be out here somewhere, and if I wasn't finding them, where else could they be? How could you do this? Where did you hide them? Please give us peace. Ironic, for someone so used to discovering and excavating lost bodies, that I'd become one myself. For all the years I spent unearthing bodies, it seems unfair somehow that mine ended up like this. Just laid out in the open, broken and discarded. Maybe I deserved this. I was fooled by the beauty of these woods. I only hope that you can find the answers you need, that everything that happened was not in vain. Push forwards. But prepare yourself, you stand on the verge of a terrible darkness.
You're here, finally. Let me tell you a story. You'll like this one. It's about you. Now, I wouldn't call you the hero, but everything in it revolves around you and what you did. You don't remember anything, do you? Of course not. You're a coward. I'd say you disgust me, but, well, it's a little more complicated than that. Come on, through the door. You're so close now. Don't you want to know how all this ends? The old lab. So cramped working cheek by jowl with those fools on their useless, stupid little trivialities. Nothing more than distractions. They dismissed my ideas as wrong, then begged my help for their own work. If only they could have seen what I was working on behind their backs. I knew I had to get out before they found out what my little side project was. They wouldn't have understood. They couldn't. I was so very far beyond them. Isolation. Space to breathe, to think, to work. No more dingy little space hidden away from prying eyes. Out here, I am free. It also neatly solves the problem of disposal. When I'm finished with any biological material, human or animal, I simply seal it in a bath of acid and drop it to the bottom of the lake. What I wouldn't give for an incinerator, Still, there are always trade-offs, and I must make do with what I have. A small price to pay. Sacrifice. I'd often ask myself if what I was doing was right, was just. Progress demanded sacrifice. Imagine the potential. Cures for cancers, for wasting diseases and childhood afflictions. If I could rid the world of these things, nobody would care about how I did it. I'd be a hero, forever immortalized as one of the true scientific greats. worked. The experiment. It worked. A breakthrough I could never have dreamed of back under the watchful eye of those fools. I had my doubts back in my old lab, but out here, I felt anything was possible. And I could do absolutely anything. I 
didn't have the evidence yet to support my findings. I needed to replicate the experiments. Go further. Be bolder. I had no choice, did I? I took another. A man camping with his wife. I needed him. If I hadn't taken him, they might have stumbled on my lab. It's too valuable. I can't stop now. That's what I told myself as I beat the wife to death with a rock. She tried to stop me from taking her husband. Sacrifices had to be made. But I lay awake at night. I couldn't get her face out of my head. The old man had to die. While he'd been staying in his cabin, he went to the police. I decided to see what effects the grafts would have in terms of aggression and capacity for violence in the subject. <sighs> Nothing could have prepared me for this. It tore him apart. I just want to be left alone. Why do they keep coming? I couldn't let her find out what happened. She didn't deserve this, though. I can't stop it. I can't control it. What have I done? How could I be so wrong? Last night I had a nightmare. I was in the woods, everything familiar, walking through the trees. He was there, the old man from the cabin. He spoke to me like a friend. Every night now, the same dream, the same path, the same voice. I can't sleep. When I do, I awaken among the trees. She is in them too. Now, the woman, the digger, she's not my friend. She screams at me, but... I can't wake up for hours. She knows everything I know. She knows what I did. When we last spoke, I told you to learn your story. To find answers. To find those stories I couldn't finish. You wronged us. Both of us in the worst ways imaginable. But what's done is done. You can't change that. Nobody can. There's no sense in going back and reliving it over and over. The outcome is always the same. I made a life digging up the past, but now it's time to put it to rest. You understand now. We couldn't just tell you. We had to let you see. And now, you know what we know. You feel what we feel. We couldn't rest until we moved on from this. And neither can you. Over and over again you've lived this, seen this, again and again. You're cursed, can't you see it? The weight of the guilt drags you down and sets you back on that path, endlessly. There's only one way this ends. But for us, it already has. What you did was awful, but you know that now. You feel the truth burning inside you. An animal you must set free. Acknowledge what you did. End the cycle. Move on. And know peace. We forgive, forgive you. you. Again, the same dance, the same steps. Why? You know all this. You've known it all along. And yet every time you choose to forget, to wake once more among the trees, to relive your nightmare, our nightmare, you push the truth away, refuse it, so much so it's become me. But I don't exist. Only you do. You and all you've done. Enough, enough of this. 
You can't keep walking that path like a stranger. You can't keep choosing to forget as you have. It's starting to break down. The dream, your memories, keep pushing through, taking her voice, my voice, your voice. It's time. You can't do this again. Walk that path again. It has to end. And here's where it finally stops. You can't keep turning your back on what you did. You can't keep lying to yourself. Just stop. Stop. Only you can make the choice. So what will it be? should live in hate and sadness forever. By choosing the love of those you wrong, you allow them to let go and move on in peace. And so too shall you.